Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here again, and I want to welcome you back to my beginning C-sharp with Unity. In this video, we're going to be covering variables, but before we dive into that, I'm going to quickly review the task I gave you in the last video. And to do that, I'm going to switch back over to the Hello World script. The task I gave you was to print a log message when this script was enabled, and pretty much to copy the void on disabled code. And to do that, I'm going to do the following. First, I'm going to type void, and then I'm going to type on enable, like that. Now I have the two parentheses, and then an open curly brace and a close curly brace, like so. Then I'll just simply put in my message and write, I am enabled, like so. Now I'll save, and I'm going to switch back to Unity. Here, let's run this. You'll notice that in the log it says, I am enabled. This is because when you run your game, every component that is enabled will then call that event, which means this code will run when your game starts. Now when we disable the script, and let's find the script. I believe I attached it to a cube. And now I'll just uncheck this. To disable it, you can see, hello world. And now when I re-enable it again, you can see the message play is written out to the console one more time. Okay, on to business. In this video, we're going to be covering variables. Variables in C Sharp work pretty much the way you would expect them to. And pretty much is if you've gone through any basic high school math, then you will have been acquainted with them. But if not, just hang with me and I'll give you a brief example. Let's take a look at this image here. In this image, I'm creating a new variable, and I'm assigning it the value of 2. Now let's look at this next line. Here we have y equals 3. Now, can you guess what the result of, the, of z is going to be if z equals x plus y? Well, you simply remove that x and y and replace them with the values you've assigned earlier. So this would read z equals 2 plus 3, which would in fact equal five. And that's how we use it in C sharp. A variable is a way that we create a name and we assign data to it. And then when we work with that, that name, we're using that name almost as a metaphor for that data. So the question is, how do we create variables in C sharp? And actually it's very easy. First, you provide a type of that variable and next, you provide the name of that variable. You can optionally assign a value to it, and that's what we'll be doing. So let's break this down one piece at a time. What is a type? Well, a type can encompass a whole lot of things. In fact, I'm going to be doing a video just on types, and it will explore all the various different C-sharp types that are available to you. But in the broad sense, a type is just what that variable represents. For instance, we could use a number, for uh, such as how old is this thing? We could use a whole number. We can also use a decimal number. That is another type. We can use text, for instance, as a sentence. Or we could even use Boolean values, such as true and false. Again. C-sharp supports a whole lot of types, and you can even create your own types. But for now, we're just going to focus on two types, numbers and text. I'll start with text first. And here, I'm going to return back to my editor, and I'm going to create a new variable right underneath this opening brace. In C-sharp, it does matter where you declare your variables, and we'll be exploring this later in this series. But for now, just put your variables just underneath this opening public class and so forth. All right, the first thing we're going to work with is text. And text is kind of strangely worded in C Sharp. We can think of text as a series of characters, which are letters, but they don't, they're not necessarily letters. They could be punctuation marks or uh, ASCII art or anything like that. So we can think of them as a series of characters. And in C Sharp, we think of this as a string. I'm not too sure how it came about to be called a string, 
but that's exactly what we call that's what exactly the type is called so here we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call we're going to identify this as a string so we type in string like so you'll notice that the string is a different kind of color it's a light blue and this is because this is known as a keyword and we'll be covering keywords throughout this series but that's what this indicates okay we've defined the type that we're going to use now we have to define a name in this in this example we're going to create names of video games so what I'll use is a variable called game name and look at how I write this I'm gonna put lowercase g and then I'll write game and then an uppercase n and then I'll write name that looks kind of funky you may want to do something like this or you would probably want to do something like this <laughs> you can see uh, mono develop doesn't exactly like that in when declaring your variable names they have to be one one name meaning you can't have empty spaces breaking this up this would confuse the compiler so we have to we have to combine them like that so why did I put a lowercase name like this? Why not just make this all lowercase? Well, you can do that. And C Sharp's variable naming conventions are pretty pretty loose. You can call your variable whatever you want to in a way that makes sense to you. But here's the thing. In C Sharp, there's a lot of different conventions that programmers use. And if you just start using your own convention and then start working at a shop that writes to a proper C sharp convention or a unity convention people are going to be really confused by your code a lot of these conventions came about to make code easier to read and to know what it does at a glance and one convention is to use what is known as camel case meaning everything is lowercase except whenever you start a new word we capitalize it like this and also we always start the first letter lowercase here's another example if I wanted to say the game name is I would type the and then I would put game capital G name is like so and you can see even though scrunched together you can still make out the words you can also use underscores but again this is really not standard and people would uh, raise an eyebrow at you if you did something like this for the purposes of the series just use camel case and I will note when you should use a capital first letter because that is very important a few other notes about variable naming here we have game name if I want to create another variable say such as this this is actually valid these are two different variables the compiler doesn't the compiler sees them as different because their capitalization is different so keep that in mind also I mentioned that there's things such as keywords and if you ever want to create a variable using a keyword you can actually use the at symbol for instance the if keyword I can create a variable called if by putting the at sign before it this is actually discouraged this is primarily used if for instance you had some code and then Microsoft introduced a new keyword and it might have broken your app well you can get around that by using the at, at sign but generally you don't want to do this also you can use underscores to start your variable names like this and typically you'll see programmers do this for certain types of patterns specifically when it comes to access control which we'll be getting into a little bit later in this series but for the sake of this series just start your variables with the lowercase and then follow camel casing from there on out and again I'll cover w when you should start using capitalization and so forth okay we're gonna assign this a name and I'm gonna call this Super Mario Brothers like so whenever you're working with text you always want to put it within quotation marks if you need to use quotation marks within your text you can use the backslash and then you can put your quotation mark like that and this will properly run this isn't complete 
in order to finish this statement, we need to end this now with a semicolon, like so. That indicates that your that statement is done. To the compiler, this would be a sentence, and by adding a semicolon, you're basically adding a period to the end of that sentence. If you didn't use semicolons, the compiler would be confused as you add more and more expressions to it. So always make sure you add a semicolon after your statement. Now that we have our game name, let's create another variable. And this will be the age of the game. To reflect this age, we're going to use a whole number. And this number is also known as an integer. And there's a certain range of values we can use for an integer. And I'll be covering that in the video I do on types. But for now, you don't have to worry about any of that. Okay, what do we use to indicate an integer? We use the keyword int, like so. And now I'm going to give it the variable name age. Again, I'm going to start lowercase like that. And equals 30. Notice that there's no quotation marks. This indicates a number or a value. And now we have two variables. Variables aren't really useful unless you can actually use them. So we're going to do that right now. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this on enable for now. Now I'm going to print out a sentence using both of these variables. And I'm going to do this in my log statement. First, I'm going to write a sent I'm going to start the sentence with the game. And now I'm going to add a space, and then I'm going to hit the plus sign. The plus sign is an operator. And it can be used in different ways depending on what variables you're using. And we'll be covering operators in another video. But for now, you can know what we're doing is we're taking the name of the game, and we'll type game name, and we're literally adding it to this other string over here. So this would read the game, and then the plus sign adds Super Mario Brothers. I'm going to add another plus sign. And I'm going to add another quotation marks like this because we're adding some more strings. So we're adding this string to the other strings. Is. And then I'll use another plus sign. And what I'll do here is add age. What this will do is this will automatically take this number and convert it into text for us because we want to use this in a text context. And we'll write years old. So here we have the game, game name is plus age plus years old. I'm going to save this. And there's going to be times when you're working when things aren't going to work out. Let's take, for example, if I forgot this question mark. I'm going to save this. And what I like to typically do is build this to make sure I haven't made any errors. And I hit Command B or Control B if you're on a Windows machine. And you can see here, whoa, look at this. <laughs> we have a sea of red hair. This lets us know something has gone wrong. And it's indicating all these lines. Well, typically, what you can do is you start with the first error that you're seeing and then move back a line. Because typically, when you make a mistake on that one line, it cascades through the rest of your program. Then go through this line one at one thing at a time. And you can see here, we forgot our quotation. Once you've made that fix, hit save again and build again. And you notice all those other errors go away. Sometimes MonoDevelop will not catch errors. It's going to report that everything is fine. And you're going to be wondering why that is. Let's take an example. Let's redefine the age variable like so. In this case, MonoDevelop has actually caught this error. But if it didn't catch this error, what you would do is that you would save, you would build, and then move over back to Unity again. And you'll see now we get this error in our console. This is usually the first thing you should check after you've coded because the console is much better at notifying you about errors. And what's nice is you can click on this line. It will highlight the script. And you can just double click it, and it will bring you back to the line that has the issue. Here, I'm going to delete this, and I'll save this. I'm not going to build it, 
and then I'll move back to Unity, and Unity will automatically build it for me. So you don't necessarily have to build it. That's just an optional step. I like to do it to catch errors as soon as I as soon as they occur, so I don't have to keep on switching back and forth. But again, Mono Develop is pretty finicky when it comes to error detection. All right, now that we have our code in place, I'm going to switch back over, and now I'm going to run our game. Okay, our message, our console is clear, and let's disable the Hello World script. Here you can see the game Super Mario Brothers is 30 years old. Before I sign off, I'd like to cover one brief thing that is really important when working with Unity and touches on some of the ideas of access control. And I'll be covering it more in detail in another video. But for now, there's going to be times when you're going to want to be working with variables within the inspector. Say, for instance, here I have our cube selected. Here, let's say, for instance, this was a player object. You wanted to set the amount of lives that player had or how much damage that player could could take. To switch back and forth between Mono Develop and Unity would get very tiring after a while. Thankfully, we have ways to that we can set those values directly within the inspector. If I switch back to Mono Develop and I use the keyword public before each of these, what I'm doing is I'm now making these available to be updated in the inspector and I'm setting default values for them. I'm going to save this, I'm going to return back to Unity, and now look at my Hello World script. You can see now we have game name and we have age. Let's play this now. And let's say another great game is Ultima 4. I'm guessing this is probably 33 years old maybe, like so. And now if I disable this cube, you can see the game Ultima 4 is 33 years old. What if we did GTA 5? We'll say this is two years old. You can see I made my changes. I'm not doing any compiling. I'm just simply enabling and now disabling. And you see the game GTA 5 is two years old. This is really useful and will really help you to really fine tune your game while it's actually being played. Okay, what is your assignment for the next video? Well, I want you to return back to on enable, and I want you to create two new variables. I want you to create another game, and this time give it a star rating. And this another game is going to be a string, and the star rating is going to be at int one through five. Once you have those two variables defined, make sure you can define them in the inspector, like I just showed you, Hopefully you've learned some from this video. If you've enjoyed the content, feel free to give me a like. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. And if you want to be notified about any other future videos, feel free to subscribe. And YouTube will notify you when new videos are produced. Well, I want to thank you for watching this, and I will catch you in the next episode. See you then.